Hello, 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 everybody. I am J Malls of J Malls Gaming, and it's time to rank the Persona characters. It's been a long time coming. I have finally beaten Persona 3 Reload, and episode I guess came out immediately after. We're gonna ignore that for right now. So, we're going to rank the characters of Persona 3. 4, and 5, mainly because those are the ones I played. Now, this tier list that I found contained a hell of a lot more than just those characters, so I threw them all into this tab, uh, not applicable, except for this one guy that I think comes from P2. Um, I put him in S tier simply because his stash is absolutely righteous, and I think it deserves recognition. So, we're going to go and rank all of these Persona characters. Buckle up! Yeah, we're gonna get real nerdy. So, first up, FemC. Now, we're gonna be starting with a little bit of a hot take, or maybe not so much a hot take. Personally, I prefer Makoto, though I think she's really fun in Q2. I'm gonna put her in C personally, and we're just gonna put her there and move on. Makoto, though, my boy. We're gonna put him right in the S tier. Let's just rip the band-aid off, you know? Junpei would have been B rank without Chidori. But that story tugs at the old heartstrings. And you know what? Akihiko, I like ya. I'm gonna put you in A rank, actually. I'm gonna put him in A rank. We're gonna be a little bit uh, strict with this list, yeah? We're gonna be a little bit strict. I'm gonna put Mitsuru in S, though. Fuka's gonna go in A tier for me. She's about on the same wavelength as Akihiko for me. I guess, though, look, number... She's, like, my second favorite character in all of Persona. You're gonna find out who my favorite character is later on. Great character. Kormaru is an amazing character as well. Every time the dude yaps by barking about his owner at the shrine, Again, tugged the old heartstrings. Gonna put him in a high A tier for me. Ken, though, this is someone who is an overachiever. At the start, he would have been down to here in the F rank. However, over the course of the game, also he makes me coffee that restores SP. He punched well above his pay grade. He's going up into, you know what? C. He's going up into a solid C rank. Hey, Ken, you're doing okay. Shinjiro, though, wholesome dude. Really appreciate him. But... For me, the reason he's in A and not B, for me, those scenes with Kormaru, wholesome as all hell, love to see it. Screw this nerd and everything he stands for, he's an F tier for me. Chidori though, look, Chidori goes right alongside Junpei for me. They are two peas in a pod, their stories are intertwined, they make each other go from characters that are okay at best for me, to, to one of my favorite dynamics in all of Persona. Easy ass tier. Bootleg Jin with the Deku from the end of My Hero Academia cut is going straight to F tier as well. Never cared about him. His boss fights were always mid. Dude only threw grenades and did no damage. I don't know what his plan was. Takaya is legit one of the worst villains in Persona and I don't want to hear it. Okumura from P5 Clayers. Yeah, this dude goes into F tier. Would have been double F tier if it wasn't for those extra little scenes we got. You know what? I may be a, be a little bit too harsh here. I'm gonna move him up to D. I'll cut him a little bit of slack in that regard. Ryoji? Here's another hot take. I actually like this guy. I like his dynamic with Joker. I like... Mainly when he's first introduced, he's a bit annoying, but I do like his overall story, tying with Makoto, being death, how I guess hates his guts, she's an icon for that. I'm gonna put him in B tier. Not too high, but I do appreciate him. Okay, look, Kenji, he's like the definition of bland, in my opinion. There's absolutely nothing special, nothing going on here. His haircut's ass. Man has, like, one of the worst social links ever devised. I he's, like, on Takaya tier. This dude, I think his name is Odagiri, does not deserve to have the same arcana as my boy Kanji. Absolutely no shot he's also emperor to Mitsuru's empress. That is a crime against humanity. I'm calling Geneva and I'm calling Collect. He's going straight to D tier as well. Not the worst. He's not Jin, but he's not being that high in terms of the ranking. I love these two. One of my favorite social links in all of Persona. They are wholesome. They feed us every time we go to them. I love the whole persimmon tree thing. Boonkichi's just a barrel of laughs. I love him. That's my guy right there. He goes to A. Mitsuko, look, Boonkichi clears. I'm going to put her in B though. This dude, man's got the Vegeta hairline. He's okay. Right, right? Like, he's 
he's okay. You use him, though, to get the Mamoru. And that's why I'm gonna put him in C tier. He's totally okay. Now, look, forehead over here. You invent this thing out for advertising space. You know there's gonna be a Raid Shadow Legends ad on her forehead at some point in this lifetime of Persona sequels we're eventually going to get. Again, a hot take. There's quite a few people that love Chihiro. I find her kind of annoying. I'm gonna put her in C tier. Maya, though. My MMO buddy, a pocket healer. I appreciate that. I like the social link. I think it's fun. Then Makoto just wants to play some video games on the weekend. I don't know how he gets in like only four hours of MMO RPGs and makes any progress though. If you've ever played WoW or Final Fantasy or Guild Wars or Star Wars, you know the grind. I'm just saying, I like her. She's in B tier for me. This dude's a nerd. I hate him. Dude looks like a bootleg version of Scott the Waz. No one likes this guy. I will never hear another opinion on this. I am a Firm advocate that no one actually likes this guy. What a nerd. This dude's going in C tier. Yuko, look, I like her. Voice actor in Reload, by the way, is like weirdly good for a side social link. Like, normally the voice acting is really good in Persona games, but like Yuko's rivals the main cast. She's amazing. I'm gonna put in B tier for me. You know what? You know what? Wait a minute. I'm gonna put in high B tier. Like, we're straddling the line with A tier here. No one cares about this kid, F. Okay, also no one cares about this kid as well, F tier as well. Weird how he stalks you in the middle of the night, wakes me up out of a deep sleep to yap about death. Dude, I'm drop kicking you out the window frame one. Bebe though, get him right up to A tier. That's my boy. I appreciate him. He's funny. He's witty. Great social link overall. Great story. I appreciate him. I like him a lot. Tanaka, look, he may rip me off every now and then, but he gives me some decent items. And his social link is, look, it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. I'm not the biggest hater of Tanaka. I think he's kind of funny every now and then. I'll put him in C. I actually like the old monk, right? Again, I think he's one of the better social links in all of P3, and I think his social link and the message that it has is pretty heartwarming, with him just trying to reconnect with not only himself, but also his estranged family, and trying to become a better person, but having to come to grips with wanting to become a better person first and foremost. I appreciate that story of his. Um, It's one of the only ones at night, which kind of elevates his and Tanaka's, in my opinion, because we have, like, nothing else to do at night, so I'm gonna put him in B tier. Mamoru, great social link really really depressing though not gonna lie to you like my, you know my man is singing the chemical workers song when he has it like 9 to like 9 a.m to 9 a.m factory job he gets at the end of it he's going to b rank though i appreciate him i don't mind nozomi the whole cult thing is weird with him i'm not gonna lie but think about it like this he takes us out to eat at delicious food spots and gives us all the good recommendations every social link pretty much I can appreciate that. This man single-handedly kept some businesses open. Like some struggling restaurants, this man was eating the entire menu daily. I can appreciate that. He goes to a B rank for me. Yes, he's above Ken. Now, there are moments, right? There are moments where I have an opinion that I feel so strongly about that I fundamentally do not care what anyone else thinks. Akinari is one of them. He is, in my opinion, not only the best social link in all of Persona, well, he's just the best social link in all of Persona. He exemplifies the theme of P3 perfectly, and when you have the thought in the back of your mind that you know Makoto's also not making out of this game alive, it makes the whole story hit way harder. And then they bring back his book in P4 with Nanako, Chef's Kiss, amazing social link, one of the best characters in my opinion, that rank 10 and the follow-up at the end of the game with his mother breaks the heart. He easily goes in the S, and honestly is probably the only social link that's not a main character that'll get in the S tier for me. Amazing character, and it's a shame we gotta follow up with her, whose name, I think she's called Natsuki. She's okay, right? She's a, ah, that's, putting her in the same tier as Kenji is a bit rude. I'll put her in C tier, low C tier though, not too highly. Now, I gotta put her in the same tier as her, like, MMO, like, VTuber persona. Put her there. Uh, old Yukari, look, 
She's okay. Nothing too offensive. Goes in the C tier. Now, we got Breaking Bad over here. We have Walter White in Persona. Unironically, this dude just sells you drugs that you use in Tartarus. Again, he's solely okay. Man has frequent deals and is kind enough to call, for me, call me when he has a deal. I can appreciate that. Now, the cop that sells us weapons. Kind of funny. Um, really wish he had a social link. I actually really like this character. Again, though, wish he had a social link. This dude is okay. I like the eye patch. He's okay, though. Inoffensive? Doesn't do much. Now, we have done P3, and we move on to P4, which, funnily enough, way fewer characters, but at least in this list. Now, my boy, my MC, Yu Narukami, Shadow Kami himself. I love this guy. His answers are always the best. They're great. He's funny. If you haven't seen the P4 anime specifically dubbed, I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend it. I'm the king now. Dude, S-tier character. Love him. Love him, love him, love him. Yosuke Hanamura is funny. Gets a little bit annoying on occasion, though. However, I really appreciate the dynamic that he has with the MC Yu Narukami. I really appreciate that. His story at the very beginning, with the girl who dies immediately, it's pretty dang good. It's pretty dang good. And also the voice acting, mwah, chef's absolute kiss. My motorcycle! Whenever he's on screen, you know it's either going to be emotional or really funny. There's just a couple of scenes here and there that, yeah, they're pretty Pretty justified. He can get a little bit annoying, though. I'm gonna put him in A, though. Chie, though, great character. Barrel of laughs. Every time she's talking, you know it's gonna be funny. Every scene is better when she is in it. Legit. Yukiko is like, okay. Her story's good. Her dungeon's fine. I just never particularly cared about her all that much. However, Kanji is unironically a top three character in all of Persona for me. I love Kanji so much. This dude is the definition of what makes the P4 character so good for me. All his jokes hit. He's wholesome as all hell. He's willing to fight for what he believes in and for who he wants to protect. Dude took on an entire biker gang because they were too loud and were keeping his mother awake at night when she was sick. I like Kanji so much. S tier character. Immaculate character. I will fight to the death for Kanji. His root, by the way, in P4 Arena, where he just thinks everything is a dream, is comedy gold. Every joke with Kanji lands for me. Resang, good character, solid, A tier character for me. I like the cast of P4 the most, by the way, just, they all work with each other. That's where they really shine, and I think I've made a video on this. The character development and the cycle of character development in P4 resonates the most with me, because I really appreciate us, like, diving into their mental state and them having to accept themselves for who they are in their dungeon and then we see the result of that action for the rest of the game and especially in the social link having said that now we get to teddy i'm a teddy defender i'm willing to go to bat for teddy again like yosuke there's a few scenes where it gets a little bit annoying but i really appreciate his story in my opinion it's the best at the beginning of the game and at the end of the game it's really heartwarming that one scene with nanako where he's like crying over her bed great character really like his resolution really like his development he has some great wholesome scenes as well now, though, though, my opinion, one of the better characters of P4 Golden as well. Dynamic with Kanji is S tier, and I really like the elements she adds to the murder mystery because she helps legitimize that storyline, in my opinion, and helps to really make the stakes feel believable and make the game feel like a murder mystery because we actually have an ace detective. Nanako, though, again, S tier character, mainly because she's reading Akinari's book, and you know what? That got me. I appreciate that. However, she's also just a barrel of wholesomeness. And in a story like P4, they can be very well needed. I really appreciate the character of Nanako. Dojima, again, he can get a little bit annoying because he's always doubting us. But I can't really blame the guy because everything does kind of go sideways when we're involved directly. So his suspicion is absolutely justified. And I do really like the character. And that one scene where he like goes off into the night on the rainy night in his car chasing after Nanako. S tier. Though I put him in A tier. No, I'm going to put him in S tier. I think he's a big reason why I like P4 so much. He hits the vibe as well with the murder mystery like Naoto perfectly. He's okay. You know what I mean? He's okay. Doesn't do much for me. Lowest P4 character at least so far. I like the sports club people. I like that they both have their own individual storyline depending upon who you pick. I think they both work. I really appreciate them. I think I was being too harsh with Yosuke. Rise. Yeah, those two. Gonna put those
goes to an S tier instead. Uh, the Death Girl. Her entire social link feels like it was out of P3. But again, it works because the nuance with it fits with the whole idea of discovering yourself in P4. But it can get really dark and depressing. But I think it's a nice tonal shift for the social links in P4. Okay, I like the Fox because I really like its healing abilities in the dungeons. I really appreciate that. Having said that, some of those requests are really annoying to fulfill. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh my god, man has us do actual, like, oblivion side quests. But at the end of the day, he's a fox. I can't get too mad at him. You know what I mean? I can't get too mad at him. The nurse is okay. I have no strong feelings one way or the other in regards to the nurse. Now, I think I've done her social link, but I can't remember it. I think it was cute, but like, it is what it is. Same with this one. Oh, this is the one that had us go to the hospital all the time. It was okay. I actually didn't mind this one. I'll put it in B, though it's really dang close to C tier. I, Ebihara. One, it made for a funny filler episode in the anime. But also, there's an element to this character that I do really appreciate, and that is the fact the social link can divert completely, depending upon your choice to data initially. I think it was a really cool, unique element to a social link, and I think it elevates the character overall and doesn't just follow the trend that, hey, if you date these characters, then that'll be the best course of action. Her entire social link bucks that trend. I appreciate that. I'll throw her up in the B tier. This kid's a nerd. I never cared about him. Though that one scene where the entire investigation squad helps this kid study is rather heartwarming and literally elevates this guy from F tier for me into C tier. And I'll put him into a high C tier. That's what I'll do. Again, I think she's okay. I'll put her in B. It's fine. I'm a Marie defender. Put her right in the S tier. I'm a defender. My only issue with the Marie social link is that it feels so disconnected from the rest of the story. And I can understand why there are people out there that may not like the character because she can be kind of cringy on occasion, especially with the poems. I find them charming, however. And with the story of P4 being to discover yourself and to understand who you are and to accept yourself, I think her social link and her entire storyline being about that, especially so, works so well with P4. I'm gonna put her in S tier. Dude, this guy is never not annoying and cringe. He works with the story, don't get me wrong, which is why I'll put him in C, but he was a villain that I love to hate. I wish we had a bit more with him. You know what I mean? Because we kind of get like trauma dumped with this guy all at once, and I wish it was a bit more gradual. I think his story works. I just wish it was a bit more spread out. You know, like jam on toast. Just spread it a bit more, you know what I mean? Adachi is really funny. He does just kind of feel like a Redditor. And I know there's some people who view him to be the best villain in all of Persona. I disagree. I like him. Don't get me wrong. And I'm gonna put him in A tier because of it. Because he's not nearly as bad as Takaya, in my opinion. And while I haven't played P4 Arena myself, that one scene where he teams up with Narukami and they both summon their persona at the same time. But it was cool. It was really cool. He goes to A tier because of that. I think he works as an interesting villain. I like him overall. I could not tell you who the hell this guy is. Straight up, I'm gonna put him in not applicable simply because I don't remember him. Maybe he was from the side games. He may have been from P4 Arena or something like that. I don't remember him. If he was in the base game, I couldn't tell you. Now we move on to P5. Oh goody, P5. This may get a little bit controversial. I like Joker. I like him a lot. He's going to S tier for me. I really like Joker. I like the, p the Persona protagonist on the whole. I think Joker really works. He's flashy. He's cool. I love the dynamic he has with Sainijima. I like the fact he's being interrogated the entire game. And he toughs it out. Pillage them. Satanaya! One of the coolest lines in the entire series, in my opinion. Morgan is trash. He's okay. I don't view him too highly. He's not like absolute garbage, right? Like he's not on Kenji. You know what? He is on Kenji's level. I I was mistaken there. I was really thinking of it. Got to put him down to F as well. Now, I'll keep him in low D. But Morgana to me is okay. I prefer the other.
the mascots. And like Morgana at his best to me is passable, but he's okay. I never really felt too strongly about him. I don't view him as bad as everyone else, but not like that highly either. He was annoying in base P5, gets a little bit better in P5 Royal. The entire storyline with Haru was just annoying. I get it. It does work. I just found it annoying overall. I love Ryuji though. S tier character. I love his dynamic with Joker. I love his social link, his story in Striker is incredible. The moment when he's actually allowed to drop an F-bomb. Great moment. There's not a scene in this game that I think Ryuji makes worse, and I think he makes every scene way better. I'm a big Ryuji fan, possibly a stan. Gonna put him in S. On to me. Look, normally when it comes to the MCs of Persona games, I normally group them in what I like to call like their subtype. So you have the MCs, Makoto, Narukami, and Joker. You have the bet you have your best friend, your best boy, Ryuji, Yosuke, Junpei. And then you have have, like the initial girl you have like yukari chie and on i think compared to yukari and chie i like on the least she's okay i think her storyline works really well it's just after that point she's not too memorable for me yusuke i really like his social link and i think he can be really fun and i really appreciate his storyline overall i think the whole museum dungeon is one of the better ones in persona 5 but again this he kind of exemplifies the issue i have with some p5 characters and that is after this story is concluded in the game they just kind of feel there or there for a couple of jokes every now and then and like his main joke after this point is that he's poor which is funny don't get me wrong it's just that's kind of all he brings to the table in my opinion he's okay I never really liked using him all that much. I think his, like, outfit is one of the worst ones in P5 as well. I'll put Yusuke in C tier for me. Makoto. Easily one of my favorite Phantom Thieves. The only reason I'm not going to put it in S tier is simply because a confidant is the weakest of the Phantom Thieves, in my opinion, because it's, like, all about some side character that I don't care about. I wish it concerned her more. I know what they were trying to do with it, and that is develop this other character who's kind of the complete opposite to Makoto and have a bounce off of her in that regard. I never really like character development that's handled like that. I don't think it works for Makoto, but really, that's the only reason she's not an S tier. Otherwise, she's one of the better members of the group. She gets a lot done. I think she's funny as well. Her outfit and her persona are badass, but I'm going to put her in A rank because of that. I think Futaba, again, is one of the better characters of P5. Her storyline really, really works. I liked how it works with Sojuro as well. When she was first introduced, I thought she was going to be a bit cringy, but I was pleasantly surprised by how she flows with the story, how she works with the entirety of the cast. I'm going to put her in A. That's for me, though. I can understand why some people put her in S tier. I can completely get that. For me, though, I just put her in uh, an A rank. Not particularly anywhere in A, just like in an, the amorphous A. Haru gets done so poorly in base P5 that it's borderline laughable. She is introduced so late in the game that she's not given a lot of time to shine. But when she gets that time to shine in both Strikers and Royal, I think she does stand out and she stands out in great ways. I think she is a great cast member. She's like weirdly fun in Strikers, by the way. If you haven't actually played Strikers, she like summons tornadoes very often and you can spam her grenade thrower. And I really appreciate that because she gets me in that regard, you know? I don't view Haru as low as some people do because of the extra stuff she gets in Royal and Strikers. I never thought she needed a lot. She just needed a little bit more and she got that. She goes to A for me. Akechi. Again, one of the reasons I like P5 so much is largely because of Akechi. He goes in the S tier, and I think he is one of the better villains in all of Persona. And yes, I will call him a villain. The dude killed a lot of people. I think his dynamic with Joker works a lot. I really, 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 really like what they do with him in Royal. I just wish in New Game Plus we could use him from the beginning of the game or something in Royal. I don't know why they didn't let us. He's really fun. I like his energy. He adds a lot to the overall feeling of Persona 5. And his storyline with his father as well works so well. Look, there's not much more to say about Akechi that hasn't already been said. I think he works especially well. Sumire. 
or whatever her other name was. Again, this to me, she has the same cons as, say, Haro from Base P5, where a lot of her time in the sun is too much so at the end of the game, where she doesn't get enough time in the spotlight. But we do get a bit beforehand, and I think it really does work. My brain is saying that I should put her in A, because she's a really fun character, but we don't get enough of her before the very end of the game. However, the highs we do get with this character for me are enough to push her into S tier. I thought it would be really hard to add on entire new main characters to the cast of P5 and not make them feel extra or redundant, and she completely dismantled that notion I had when I was going into P5 Royal. She goes into S tier form. Me. Now, my boy Sojuro. He starts off really aggressive, really annoying, just completely against you. But you wear down his heart, and you warm it up, and like the Grinch, it grows three sizes. And when that happens, especially with the story with Futaba, to me, he's one of my favorite characters. He goes in the S tier for me. I think he has one of the best confidants in P5. I really appreciate him teaching us how to make the curry and the coffee as well. He's a great, like, parental figure for Joker in P5. He starts off low, like, he starts off down here. But over the course of the game, he works his way all the way up. And I really appreciate that. Now, the scam artist. She's okay. I'm gonna put her in C tier, though. I have no real strong feelings about her. She does take our money at the beginning, but we do get it back, I believe. But I'm gonna put her there. Now, this dude sells his guns, and I can appreciate that. I also just really like his social link overall. And again, some of the social link slash confidants that I like the most in Persona are the ones that offer a unique perspective that we don't see from the rest of the game. And I think his falls in line with that for me. It's been a little bit since I played P5, so I don't remember all these characters' names, him being one of them. But his entire story with the Yakuza and with his, like, child, he's, like, his daughter... I think it works really well with the themes of P5 being to, like, rebel against systems that you don't agree with that are fundamentally bad for society, and also finding yourself and accepting yourself. I think he really works in that regard. I really like him. I think he adds to each scene that he's in. However, 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 step aside and let the goat come through. The nurse. Dude, doctor, doctor, tell me the news. I'm just saying, she is my favorite character that can heal us. Now, the fox can do it in the dungeons, but she always had one of my favorite social links, and I like, well, slash confidants, you know what I mean. But the nurse works really well. Look, Persona 5 was my first Persona game, so I have a massive soft spot for it and its characters. And Makoto, not Makoto, Tai Takemi, was always one of my favorite confidants because of the overall plot line that is involved with it. Look, ethical quandaries of, like, doing random drug tests on some random teenager you met is a bit... Like, ignoring that, right? She's one of my favorites. What can I say? She's really cool. Her character design is S tier. Her storyline is S tier. She's going to the S tier. Easily. Now, the teacher. Look, this one's a bit suspect. We all don't have to, like, argue on that. It is. It's a bit suspect. However, she's going into B tier. Simply because, one, she's a terrible teacher. But, she lets us play hooky in class. And I can farm things there. Really appreciate that. She gives us more activities that we can do in the evenings. Again, I really appreciate that. She's great utility. Her mechanical advantages propel her into B tier. And now we have the Ouya. Who remembers that console? Um, she's the only social link I never actually care enough to do. I think I did a once, and I barely remember it. I think she's easily one of, if not the most forgettable characters, slash social link, slash confidants, in all of Persona. She's just kind of there. And to me, I've always just viewed her as insert reporter character here. And for me... I'm going to put an F tier just for that. Now, the Tower Kid. Again, this was a social link slash confidant that I completely missed my first time through P5, but I don't feel that I missed that much. Again, I have no strong feelings towards this character. That reasoning, I'm just going to put him in D tier. They're just kind of there. I don't like him as much as any character in C, and I view them to be, you know what? Honestly, F tier. And I'm going to put characters in F tier that I think I just don't really care about to even remember. Now, the Shogi Girl. I know there was, like, talk, and I don't know how verifiable this is, that in very, very, very early production of P5, it was originally planned for it to be, like, a 
main phantom thief. I can kind of see that because I've always viewed this confidant to have a bit more development and for this character to kind of stand out a bit more than most other characters in P5. I think it would have been very cool to see her, especially with her narrative, to be a confidant that is a phantom thief. I think that could have worked really well. They didn't go that route. Maybe they should have, but I think I do view her to be roughly in that B tier range for a character that's just a confidant. Her story is really compelling. It's intriguing. I like the dynamic of playing Shogi at the church. Her overall story of being this like child prodigy for Shogi, but going against her mother, it fits with the theme of P5. So because of those reasons, she's not one of my favorite characters because again, lack of development by just being a side social link slash confidant. But there's enough there that I really like. I'm going to put in B tier. Mishima gets a bad rap. Deservingly so because this kid's a jabroni. However, he gives me XP share in P5. That will literally lift him out of D and F tier into C tier. Giving me XP share, I appreciate. Now, remember what I just said about the Shogi girl in regards to confidant specific characters that exist only for the confidant not having enough time in the spotlight to really shine um this guy goes against that i am a big fan of the politician in p5 because p5 is an overtly political game it's a breakdown of like modern japanese politics and a lot of different perspectives in regards to japanese society so having a confidant that is actually a politician is a great perspective for this theme and for this story and i think it works especially well because he's just a great character he's a character that has done bad things in the past but is actively remorseful and wants to do better and to be better and actively tries to be better he's someone who learns from joker and joker learns from him it's a great dynamic in my opinion sai nijima makoto sister s tier character Ugh. it's hard right because for me if we're talking about just p5 i would put makoto nijima in s but in the context of all of Persona, then I probably keep it in an extremely high A, like borderline S. Like one toe in the door of S. But when it comes to Sai Nijima, I think the main reason I really like this character, not only for what we get in Strikers, which is just nice follow-up, but also the dynamic between her interrogating Joker throughout all of P5, or at least most of P5, is a dynamic that really makes P5 stand out and to be special for me. It's an element that P5 have always appreciated. The interrogation, the entire game, or at least through Sai Nijima's palace to be a, you know, backstory. I really appreciate that. A flashback overall. It's a dynamic that I found really compelling and interesting, and I like the way the Joker eventually wins her over. She is someone who, like, exemplifies justice in this game, and she is someone where you see the justice system fails her directly throughout the story storyline of p5 it's a great dynamic especially again with those overtly political themes that p5 has i think she exemplifies those elements very well and that puts her in s tier for me the director he's okay he's like insert corrupt politician here he's fine he works well with Sainijima, which is what keeps him out of dnf I like to hate him. He's okay to me. Okay, Mr. Potato Head, the teacher. Again, one of the things I think P5 gets right, especially so, are the villains and making you hate these characters. This was a teacher. I mean, not even a teacher. He was just a principal who viewed himself way too highly. And that was ultimately his downfall. And he was a big kiss ass to the people he shouldn't have been a kiss ass to because he was looking for power. And I think this story works and it makes uh, Shujin Academy this microcosm for Japan on the whole that P5 is really going for. And I think that works really well. He's not my favorite villain of P5, but I think these elements at least keep him out of these lower tiers for me. And he's someone that I really do like and appreciate as a character. When it comes to Kamoshida, I don't think Persona has a villain that you, at least I, hate more than him in all the right ways. He's a scumbag. He's a sleaze. 
He's a creep, and it works so well for that introductory villain of P5. To me, he's arguably one of the best villains in all of Persona for that reason. He's a character you love to hate, and you love to take down. Now, I think the museum guy, I think his biggest sin is that he directly follows up Kamoshida. Like, that's his big issue, because he's a great villain by himself, and he works with Yosuke very well. Showcasing how, like, you can have these people that suck up young talent, steal all their work and their credit to prop themselves up based on just pure greed. He also showcases plagiaristic tendencies that we can see throughout a lot of media. He's a great antagonist. He's a step down from Kamoshida, and I think some people view him negatively because he follows up Kamoshida, and you don't, at least I didn't hate him as much as Kamoshida. But I think he's a fine villain by himself. And we kind of get into one of my bigger critiques of P5, and that is like the middle bit outside of Futaba's palace, being kind of weaker than the start and beginning of P5. And that exemplifies itself with the bank guy in P5. A cool villain, but he is also just kind of a mob boss that doesn't really stand on his own two feet. He just, like, blackmails you throughout his entire arc, and that's kind of it. We don't get much. We don't even see him, like, taken down. We see him, like, read the calling card, and that's kind of it. His boss fight is really cool. I like the fact he turns into a fly, and then he has a giant mech robot, like, piggy bank. That's a cool element, but his conclusion is just a lack of lust because we don't see anything as a result of it. But, like, his arc has some of the highest stakes, but that's all he really has going for him. He's kind of mid. His pros equalize his cons for me. Okumura. A lot of people don't like him or his dungeon, but it's also one of the trends of P5 that I think works the best, and that is this escalation from going to, from smallest scale social conflicts to larger scale. And we move up from, like, street level to city level. You have the corporate overlord who views his employees as nothing but trash and robots, robotic slaves to serve his will and to further his own career so that he can propel himself into the limelight of politics. He works as a great villain for Haru, but again, he's just kind of that oligarchical douche who views Haru as nothing more than a game piece on the board for him to move around and to do as he will and to marry off for mere political power. Like, yeah, he is a villain, but he doesn't really stand out amongst the crowd of P5 villains. But I don't think he's as bad as, say, most other villains this series has. By bad, I mean in terms of entertainment value. I put him in B tier. Um, the bald guy. Rivers in the Desert guy. Great villain. Again, we move on up from, like, city level to now national level with the antagonist in P5 with this guy, Masayoshi Shido. Great voice acting. Great antagonist. I like how Joker is a victim of his, and that it's built up over the course of the game. I do wish we had a little bit more with him, and Joker specifically, but you can also make the argument that the exact way they handled this is the way they should have, and the culmination, the way we took him down, my opinion, one of the best overall, like, calling card moments in all of Persona 5. Great moment, great fight, great dungeon, just overall, a lot of plot is brought to the forefront front with Masayoshi Shido. It's a great dynamic. Again, we're going into this overall critique of Japanese society and politics with P5, and I think Masayoshi Shido does a great job of that. Igor. I didn't play 3 or 4 when I played 5. 5 was my first persona, so I didn't really suspect Igor of anything. I just thought his deep voice was really cool. Joker, welcome to my goon lab. It was a great dynamic, and I liked the fact that he became a villain later in the game. Again, it was one of the twists of P5 that if you are more familiar with Persona on the whole, you may have saw it coming, but I didn't. And I really liked the twist that the guy who had been harboring about our rehabilitation and all that, for some reason, that entire plot thread really stuck with me and I really enjoyed and was engaged by. For me, I'll put him in B because I don't like him as much as Shido, but I think he did a great job. And if we're talking about overall Igor, I think because of the limited screen time, he got. Actual Igor we got later in the game would go down like D tier, but the evil Igor, I'll put him in B. We are in the last stretch of Persona. Let's get into it. Dr. Maruki, the P5 royal villain himself, has become a fan favorite, and you know what? I'm right there in agreement. 
he is easily my favorite villain in all of Persona, and it's not even close. He brings to the table one of the most interesting thematic breakdowns of Persona 5 that P5 has to offer. The whole idea of P5 is rebelling against the status quo, to fight for what you believe in, to stand up for yourself and understand what it is that you yourself want to fight for. He, Dr. Maruki, is rebelling against the status quo, fighting for what he believes in. The problem is, his method to give everyone happiness involves taking away free will and forcing his idyllic dreamscape utopia on everyone else. In a way, he is a phantom thief. He is rebelling against society. It's just, whereas the phantom thieves are trying to free people from the oppression of others, Dr. Maruki wants to free people from the oppression of liberation. He wants to take away that free will because he views it to be a root evil. It's a great premise for the Phantom Thieves to work off of, and you bring Sumeru, you bring Akechi in tow with that, and it makes the third semester my favorite chunk of any Persona game that I've played, and one of my favorite chunks of any game ever. I hold the third semester of Persona 5 Royal in extremely high regard, and the only issue that I have with it is that it's at the end of P5, and I wish we had even more time with this. And I liked how they teased Maruki throughout the game. They teased his castle, his palace, earlier in the game, back in October. He was one of my favorite social links to begin with, and then you just elevate him onto this pedestal in the third semester, and I think they did a great job with it. That final battle with I Believe blaring in the background, the final fist fight with Joker. Look, it's Mimi, it's cliche, but I'll eat it up any day of the damn week. Now, we funnily enough, move on to Strikers. And I'm going to kind of breeze through this because there's not much to talk about. But when it comes to our two new members of the Phantom Thieves, Sophia and Totally Not a Bloodborne reference, I'm massive fans of these characters. And Strikers did something that I didn't think it would be able to introduce new characters for the Phantom Thieves. And while I'm playing Strikers, make me feel as if they were there all along and are necessary and important members of the Phantom Thieves. I love these two so much because they work off of what Strikers does so well and that it's to feel like an actual follow-up to Persona 5 while not making the Phantom Thieves feel redundant. It feels like an expansion and a continuation of their narrative but you also tie it into these two new characters that do such a dang good job. Now all the villains of Strikers for me are kind of whatever. They're fine, they're inoffensive but to me they're like all in this B tier. There's not one that I actively dislike, and if I don't like them as much as the others, they provide something interesting alongside it. Like the book bro giving us a really cool, like, dungeon that's basically, basically modeled off an RPG. I think, uh, Alice in Wonderland gives us a great continuation of On Story, which I thought was sorely lacking in base P5. Um, we have Wolf's, like, daughter. She's cool, she's Mimi. Forehead for days again, but, like, their whole scene with her, like, having a stream show about the Phantom Thieves is comedy gold. It's cringy in all the right ways. For me, I'll put her in B tier. The other, I forget her name, but again, she's good and she works with Sophia. I'm a big fan of Strikers overall. Now, Tactica, I'm not too big of a fan of, and the villains for me are like solidly okay. I think they're all C tier. They're definitely a step down from Strikers for me, but what I really like about Tactica are these three right here. I actually thought they did a pretty good job with these characters. My issues with Tactica were mostly about how they handled the Phantom Thieves, not the new characters. I think, I forget her name, but I'll put her in high C, but these two will go into B tier for me. I thought they did a really good job with these two. Now, Persona Q, the girl who always ate food and the actual time god. I didn't play Persona Q, but I've watched playthroughs of Persona Q. I've watched highlights of Persona Q. These two are really entertaining, and that is a really tough thing to do that is stand out when you're alongside 
the casts of P3 and P4, which, as we've established, I hold in extremely high regard. And I think because they do that so well, I'll put them in B. By the way, bear in mind, these, like, tiers aren't necessarily ordered unless I otherwise said so. Now, we have the Velvet Room characters. Igor overall, I've already ranked, but for me, I like Igor overall. He, the nose knows I put him in B. Uh, Theodore, he's alright. I'm not too big of a fan of the Femsi route myself. Uh, he's funny in Q. I think Theodore works especially well in the Q games because his dynamic with the other Velvet Room attendants, especially Elizabeth, is really funny, and because of that, I'll throw in B. However, now, move aside, let the Queen come through. I put Elizabeth not only not there, I put her as my number one. My top, like, three to five characters in all of Persona go in order. Elizabeth, I guess, Kanji, and then maybe Maruki? Something like that. Elizabeth is just a bundle of fun. She makes every scene she's a part of fun and interesting. However, I really appreciate the story that comes with Elizabeth, at least from what I'm understanding and what I know and seen in Persona 4 Arena. She's the character alongside Igus, where I'm like, if we get an expansion of any of these characters in the future, these are the two I most want to see again. She's great. Now, funnily enough, Margaret's like my least favorite Velvet Room attendant, but that's not saying much because I'm a big fan of like all of them. It's just, I think the dynamic she has with Yu Narakami isn't as strong as Lavenza with Joker or Elizabeth with Makoto. So for me, I'm gonna put Margaret in B tier, which are still characters that I really like. Heck, I even like characters in C tier. It's just we're on like the lower end of that spectrum there. Um, the twins, they're really funny. Like they are really funny. And I think that hangout events we get in Royal are pretty dang funny because we get a lot of comedy alongside Joker. So for me, I'm gonna put them in A rank. Yeah, I'll put both, I'll put the twins in A rank, and I'll put Lavenza right alongside them. Because I think Lavenza's main weakness in the main game is that you see her for so little time. But when she is there, she's able to stand on her own two feet and to be special. And I think she is a nice standout in the side games, like Strikers and especially Tactica, where in my opinion, she was honestly the highlight of Tactica. The comedy they had alongside her there was great. Um, now we have Jose, the guy from P5 Royal Mementos. He's okay. Like, he's fine. I'm not too upset about him. I don't really think that highly of him. But for me, this is my ranking for Persona. It's been a while, but we got through it all. I am overall a big fan of Persona, and one of the biggest reasons I love Persona so much are the characters. Like, characters that I like are like C tier and above. It's just S, I think, are really special. A are characters that I really like, but don't quite fit S. B are characters that I'm like, yeah, I like these characters. These are good characters. C, I'm like, they're passable. I don't mind them. Honestly, I should probably move Ken up to B. I probably should, but like, he's very low B. And who knows, after I do episode I guess he may move up even more. So yeah, this is my ranking for Persona overall. For the games that I've played, Persona 3 Reload, Portable, Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, Strikers, Tactica. These are the games that I've played. I've watched Persona Q and Q2. I've seen some of Persona 4 Arena. I haven't played it entirely myself yet. But yeah, this is my final ranking for Persona. Let me know what your ranking is in the comments down below. Do you have any big disagreements with me? I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions, because in my opinion, the beauty of Persona is that 3, 4, and 5, in my opinion, are rather close in quality. It's just which game speaks to you the most. One of my favorite franchises. Hope we all had fun with this. Let me know yours in the comments down below. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again!